Hello and welcome to this video. So last video we saw these three crosses at the top of the table for possible success. So we're going to analyze them a bit further in this video. We're going to find out what pairs are good inside these and then we're going to try and plot the cumulative gains over time to see if it's a good steady winner or we have some strange phenomenon inside there. The first thing we need to do is actually get a list of our crosses and you know how to do that. So we just take the data frame cross unique and take the first three that are in that list and you can see here that we get given back a list of the three crosses that we want to look at. When we look at the first two rows of MA test res, we can see that we have our cross unique for each pair and we have the gain. What we want is a subset of this table here or data frame where we've only got these crosses in our list and we've only got the pairs that score greater than zero. So we'll make a new data frame called df underscore good. What we're doing here is something I don't think we've seen before. We're doing two selection criteria inside the square brackets. So we've got MA test results, we open the square brackets, and inside here we're saying what we want to select. So the first condition is here, we're saying, please get us the results where the cross value, so in the cross column here, is in, which is fairly explicable, our crosses, which is our list here. So get us only the values where the value in the cross column is the same as one of the crosses in here. And please get us the result only where the total gain is zero and make us a copy of that in case we do any modifications. And here again, you can see the power of pandas and the speed of pandas. Once you start doing multiple selections and things like this, it becomes very, very easy. And I particularly like this is in when you can say it exists in a certain other list or something. So if we quickly just look at the head of this, you can now see that we've got uh, the US dollar pound and the Canadian dollar with the cross four and eight and we shouldn't have anything with a negative gain inside here now. So now it would be nice to know how many times each of these pairs is successful. We've got three different crosses we know inside here. If I just do df good and then dot cross dot unique we have our three crosses in here. It would be nice to know exactly how many times each pair is successful for each of the crosses because three means that particular pair was good on all three of the crosses we're looking at. And pandas provides, as usual, a really convenient way to, to see this. So we say df good dot pair dot value counts. And this gives us a list of how often each pair occurs inside the table, or in other words, how often each pair is successful for each of the crosses. And we can see that we've got nine pairs here at the top of the list which seem to have been successful for every single cross so they might be interesting to have a look at further. So what we want to be able to do then is select the list of the first nine of these pairs from here. I'm just going to shorten this very very slightly here just to the first nine. Now value counts returns a series so that means actually that the pair here is an index and this is the value then at that particular index. So we want the indexes here. So if I do df good dot pair dot value counts nine and dot index you can see that I get a list here of all of the indexes. Now this is an actual index object and I'd like a pure Python list here. So I'm going to surround this in a list with brackets like so. And now you can see that we get our list of nine pairs in a nice normal list. And then we'll make this into a variable to store it. So we'll say that our pairs is equal to this. So we have our top nine pairs that all seem to have been successful on all of our crosses. Now what we can do is use our all trades data frame. I'll go back up to the top and you can remember that we imported it here, we can use all of our trades to actually get each of the individual trades that was made by each of these pairs for these three crosses. The only slight issue that we have here is that all trades doesn't have the cross column on it. It still just has the MA short and MA long. And I'm seeing also that I've put this in capitals, which is very helpful. And it's uh, in lower case in the others. So we need to remake the MA cross column much like we did somewhere up in the top of this data frame here. So here. So you can take that one and then modify it very slightly. So down here, I'm going to say that all trades cross is equal to MA, then all trades MA short plus MA long. We've seen this before in the previous video, and that now just adds the cross on, which is going to make things easy for us when we start uh, analyzing a bit further. So let's just take one example. Let's take the Canadian dollar and Japanese yen. So let's analyze just one of the pairs for now before going through all of them. We'll take, for example, the trades for Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, and we need to select all of the trades out of all trades for a cross. And in this case, we can take, uh, we'll take the MA8 and 16 and the actual pair name. And we want to see then just those trades. So to do that, you would type something like this. So we'll take our all trades and then we'll have two selection criteria again inside here. So we'll say that where the cross is MA8 underscore 16 and the pair is equal to the Canadian dollar Japanese yen. And what that gets us then 
is a table where we only have the Canadian dollar Japanese yen for that particular cross and we have all of our trades. Now if we want to plot the cumulative gains over time to have a look at this we need to make a cumulative sum of the gain. And Pandas doesn't let us down here, it allows us to do that again in a one-liner. We can type that our data frame, the cumulative gain, is equal to the gain dot com sum. And that is a function that comes with Pandas that gives you the cumulative sum. So if I run that cell and rerun the head, you can now see that we have a cumulative gain on the right hand side here. And now what we can do is we can plot this cumulative gain. Now we're going to be plotting quite a few graphs in a minute. For now we're just going to plot this one to have a look. But because we're going to be plotting a few, we're going to make a new function called def plot line and we'll take in our data frame plot and we'll take in a name of the plot as well. Now we're going to paste a bit of code in here, or I am anyway. Most of it is very, very similar to what we had inside the candle plot here. So I would recommend probably you copy this across. You don't need the candlestick trace and you're not going to be doing a loop here, but we are going to add a trace on a bit like this. Take out the candlestick, but copy the rest of the code across and paste it under here. And then I'll walk through how the code is working. So inside our plot line, we are adding this trace, which we did in the candle plot video. It's a scatter. We've got from our plot the time, the cumulative gain, We've just got a bit of styling again in here. Here we've got the name, which should be equal actually to name. I realized I've got a little bit uh, of an error in there. And the mode is lines. Then the layout, very similar to before. I've changed the margins very slightly here. The top margin is gone. The title here has been added in update layout, just to be equal to name. And then the X and Y axis have, have taken out the range slider because we don't need it because there won't be one. Changed the line colors slightly as well and removed the zero line just so things look a little bit better. I'm going to zoom out very slightly there. I'm loath to because you won't be able to see this very well, but there's the function as a whole. And you'll be able to find this on GitHub and copy it anyway if you'd like to. Zooming back in so we can actually see something, I'm going to execute this cell. And now what I want to do is just plot for us then the data frame of the Canadian dollar Japanese yen. So we'll say plot line and the name can be uh, Canadian dollar and Japanese yen. And you can see here how the cumulative gains look over time on this particular one on the, can't even remember which cross we actually looked at now, the MA8 and 16. And we can see that over time, it's actually not too bad. It does very, very well here with a steady gain over July, August, September and October. The slight issue you really have is you go from really from sort of October the 7th here all the way through to November the 30th without having really made any gains whatsoever. A bit of a gain here and then we have another period here from the 7th of December all the way through really to the 15th of January where we're at a loss before finally getting an increase. But this isn't too bad over time, particularly if you thought, well, we could combine this with lots of other currencies together and improve the general gains over time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to expand on this slightly and actually let's look at all of the pairs for the particular cross that we're interested in. So if I put down a C here as the MA8 and 16, because that's the cross we're looking at, we can now loop through all of our pairs and we're quite familiar with this. So we want to take our pair, which will be P, and then we'll make a new data frame where we do exactly what we've done uh, up somewhere up here, here, exactly the same line as this, more or less, except we're now just using the cross is C, which is what we've defined here. And then the pair is P, which is inside our pairs list. And we'll make a copy of that. We can calculate then the cumulative gain for that particular data set. And then finally, we can move in and plot our line for that particular one. And this time we're sending in the name as the pair underscore the cross. So we actually know what cross is being used. So if I execute that, what we get then is the cumulative gain graphs for all of the pairs that we're interested in looking at. So we can look at the MA816 here. We've seen this one already. Let's have a look at the Euro New Zealand dollar. And this is one that more puts me off this kind of strategy in general is that, uh, you know, we start the strategy on June the 10th and we're actually not breaking even until September the 3rd. This is not uh, very good for steady gains, let's say. Then it's pretty steady from then onwards, though. If we look at the pound yen, this one really is all over the place. We hit some kind of peak here and then we go from September the 10th, uh, then we go from September the 10th all the way through to January the 26th, having made a loss from that point. Um, the Euro Pound is another one that's made nice gains since uh, October the 15th, but was pretty static or even losing for months and months before then, so you'd have been trading for nothing. And the Euro Japanese Yen, well, yes, it's got a positive gain overall in terms of net, but again, you can see in terms of making steady gains, not very good. Pound Swiss Franc is another great example of what we've just been discussing. Again, 
not a very fav favorable shape and the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc also not very so you can have a look at those anyway and make your own mind up the one that's slightly interesting maybe is the US Canadian here which has a very steady gain over a longer period of time what we can also do though is rather than splitting the pairs out and just to finish this video let's have a look at the actual gains if we just traded all of these nine pairs but we just took the cumulative gain for the crosses themselves so let's say we traded them all in parallel with each other because of course here we're just trading one pair maybe we've got some kind of good pattern of gains there so we'll say then for C in our crosses and now it's a little bit simpler we can make ourselves a temporary data frame where we basically say we take all of the trades that are equal to our cross. So there's a slight issue with this. I'm just going to paste some code in here that you don't need to write because I'm going to remove it. But if I sort tempdf the values by time, I'll take out this line actually, and then just break out of the loop and have a look at tempdf and the first 10 rows. You'll see that we, you'll, you'll know that in the graph, we want to get the cumulative gain by timestamp, let's say, so by hour, and then add them all up for the pairs. The problem is, you'll see here we've got times repeated because it's for different pairs. So we need a way of summing these pairs up for the time. So for that, we're going to use a group by and then sum. And that will then give us the totals for each timestamp and the sum of the gain that exists for each of those. So I'm going to replace this line here with tempdf is equal to tempdf group by time and then sum and without an index so that we've got the sum of the total gain for each time because we're not interested in the actual pair here. We just want to see the gain trend by cross. Then what we can do is make our cumulative gain as we're familiar with. And now finally what we can do is we can then plot ourselves a line with the uh, particular cross that we want to see. So I'll just delete this cell here. And what we should see here then are three graphs which show us how the crosses develop in terms of gains over time. And we get some interesting results. First of all, the four and the eight and the four and the 16 have an extremely similar shape, which I guess is to be expected. And the 816 is quite similar as well, which also would be expected. The thing that really stands out for me, however, and I think this is a really interesting use case for when people are Forex trading, is the fact that trading nine pairs together, we have quite a big swing of pips. There's 6,000 pips gain there over time. But the issue with this is, you know, we start here and we lose a lot for a good couple of months before we finally start gaining. And this is nine pairs in parallel. If we go down and have a look at the four and eight, for example, then yes, we make a gain over time. But again, we have enormous losses inside there. And if you think that at some point our gain was up at 6,000, then we've really just progressively lost from October all the way through to end of January. Now, you may like what you see here. I don't particularly like what I see here. But the thing that's interesting, I think, is when people analyze this data by hand in Forex, as most people do, they'll just look at a chart maybe for one or two pairs and scroll back a few candles in time looking at the crosses. And now you can see clearly from these charts that you could really get a misleading impression of what's going on, even if you combine things together in some way, just by scrolling back over a few candles and all of that. So this data presents quite a typical picture for what are, let's say, the standard taught strategies in, in Forex trading. And those are that now and again, you get really, really big ups. And that's when you see a post on a forum saying this strategy is great. Look at my winnings over the last month or so. But in general, you'll find the strategy over time just creates large losses and isn't profitable. However, you may think otherwise from seeing this data, uh, the choice is up to you. So that's it then for this video. We've come quite a long way. We've collected some data. We've implemented a, a simple strategy, the simplest really in terms of coding. And we've covered some of the basic techniques used in pandas to plot graphs and have a look at slicing and dicing and mixing matching data. What I'd like to do next before we go on to more complex strategies is save some of this data into Microsoft Excel and then move the code that we've written in this notebook into a script so we can automate the processing of the data. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms are welcome as always on YouTube.